I'm going to tell you in a short series of videos why 8 and 9 are cool numbers, or one of probably the many reasons, but the reason that I comes to mind for me why 8 and 9 are a cool pair of numbers. Uh, and the subtitle is a little bit about perfect powers, Diophantine equations, and the ABC conjecture. So that's, uh, that's what I'm going to get to um, in the process of telling you what's special about 8 and 9. So uh, this is heavily based on an article by Barry Major. Uh, called Questions About Number, you can find a kind of a draft copy uh, at this web address. Um, and uh, it's great. It's a great article. It's a little more advanced than what I'm doing, but really it's, it's, it's very readable um, if you follow what's in these videos. So we're going to look uh, first at perfect powers. Okay, so powers of 2, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, etc. Powers of 3, for example, 1, 3, 9, 27, 81, 243, etc. Okay. Um, if you draw a picture of it, there, there. Obviously, any perfect power sequence is going to include one. So let's just say that's not very interesting. We're not going to count that as an overlap in particular. And then, if you see what happens, uh, they get sparser as they go out. And at least for these ones, you see, okay, they don't overlap at the very least. Okay. So let's think about the patterns. So a perfect power sequence. Um, any particular perfect power sequence is very regular if you analyze it multiplicatively. If you look at the ratio, for example, between any two terms, it's just called a geometric sequence. The ratio between any term two terms here is 2. The ratio between any two successive terms in this sequence is 3. So if we only use multiplication, it's pretty simple. Um, and in fact, if we think just a little bit more about it using multiplication, if we look at distinct prime power sequences, so if we think it's a prime, if we look at a prime base, like 2 and 3 were prime, and we look at powers of those primes, you're never going to get an overlap. That's really a special case of the fundamental theorem of algebra that says that any number has a unique prime factorization. And so if it factors as p to the k, it's certainly not going to factor as q to the l for some other prime q, no matter what the powers are. So that's just uh, the fact that these don't overlap, except of course at 1, um, is a special case of the fundamental theorem of algebra. So that's already a good thing to, to have mentioned. Okay. Now, that's for primes. Okay, there. If we start thinking about overlaps between any two perfect power sequences, yes, overlaps are possible. Okay, so we're solving x to the m equals y to the n for for integers x, m, uh, y, and n. Well, let's look at powers of four, for example, four, sixteen, sixty-four, two, fifty-six. Hey, those look familiar. Of course, those are just half of the powers of two. Okay, because four is just two to the two. Powers of eight is going to be a third of the powers of 2, 8 and 64, of course. Um, and so, of course, with any prime, uh, you can look at the powers of 3 squared or 5 squared or something, and they're going to overlap with the powers of uh, the prime base that it's coming from. You can also combine things. Uh, it doesn't have to be a prime power. So, for example, 1296 is 6 to the 4th, which is, if you wanted to break that out, it's 2 times 3 to the 4th, times 3 to the 4th. But it's also 2 squared times 3 squared squared. So that's something that's a fourth power and a, and a perfect square. Okay. Really, to, to figure it out, it's not very complicated. You just look at the prime factorization. Okay. So, for example, here's a much bigger number. It's 2 to the 12, 3 to the 6, 5 to the 18th. What's special about that is that the 12, the 6, and the 18, the powers are all divisible by 2 and by 3. So I can express it as 2 to the 6th, 3 cubed, 5 to the 9th, all squared, or 2 to the 4th, 3 squared, 5 to the 6th, all cubed. Okay. So when I'm looking at overlaps between prime power sequences, it's pretty simple. You just look at prime factorizations, and it's about just divisibility of, a, of the exponents and the prime, the prime factorization. Okay. So that's not super um, difficult or really super interesting, but it's, it's a nice little warm-up. Okay. Um, one thing to note, as I mentioned just briefly a minute ago, if you look at any power sequence, any perfect power sequence, it gets very, very sparse um, as, oops, as the, well, as the, um, uh, yeah, as the powers increase higher, oh, this is higher bases, that's what I meant, okay, okay. If you look at a particular prime power sequence, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, they're kind of clustered here, but then they get pretty wide, okay? It's just the fact that powers are exponential growth. They grow fast, and so the gaps get bigger. If the base gets bigger, 
um, as well, if you look at this prime power sequence, the gaps are significantly bigger because the base is bigger. Okay, so they tend to be gappy; they're very sparse. Um, and so, if we start looking at overlap questions that are just a little more general than what we just did, with the exact overlap between two different prime powers or different powers of any base, then that's going to be very interesting. Um, that's going to tell us at least a little bit that sparseness. So here's the big deal. Now we bring in addition. Any kind of interesting number theory is really com com combining multiplication and addition, and often combining powers, multiplication, and addition. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at um, solutions of the equation x to the m equals y to the n plus k. So k is just going to be a fixed integer, 1 or 2, or I'll show you an example with 24. And then we're going to look at um, solutions to this equation. So pictorially, what we're going to be doing is we're going to take like these two sequences, like the blue and the red here, and we'll shift maybe the red sequence over by a fixed amount. So everybody gets shifted over by a fixed amount. Sorry, I didn't animate that. I should have. Um, and I'm going to look for the overlaps again. Suddenly, it gets much more interesting. Okay. Notice, though, that they're still pretty sparse when you get to really big numbers. So even if you shift it, um, even though we can't show that there's no overlap using the fundamental theorem of algebra, you might still not expect a lot of solutions. Okay, so suddenly it's a much harder and more interesting problem. Okay, so as I said, the sparseness of the sequences, you're taking two sequences, they're very sparse and they might have accidental overlaps, but it, the suggestion from that, it's a very rough suggestion, is that maybe there's only going to be few solutions. And few, of course, there's a various interpretations of that. Maybe it's an infinite number of solutions, but they're very, 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 very sparse. Or ideally, maybe it's a finite number of solutions. Or even, well, actually, not ideally. That's really good. But ideal would be a very f uh, predictable, in other words, effectively calculable finite number of solutions. I give you the k, and maybe the n, and the m, and you can predict exactly how many solutions and where they'll be and the properties of that solution set. That'd be really great. Okay. I guess the ideal would be maybe for some k, there's just no solutions at all. That would be uh, a very, very uh, solid, precise statement. Okay, so let me give you an example of this. Find all integer solutions, and they can be positive or negative solutions, to x squared equals y cubed plus 24. Um, now, it happens to be when, when the powers are 2 and 3, um, there's a lot of connections to some really great stuff. Uh, you could look f at my videos on the Birch and Swinnerton Dyer conjecture, for example, um, for examples of this. This is an example of what's called an elliptic curve. Um, although mm, it might not quite be an elliptic curve, but it's very related. Okay, so um, anyway, we're just looking for solutions to that. Um, why don't you think about um, if you can find some integer solutions to that? Notice, because x comes in as a square, if you find a pair x y, then um, just negating the x will give you another solution. So that's just sort of two for one. Um, but you could just look for positive solutions here. And now y plus or minus doesn't just uh, leave this the same, and so you actually need to look both at positive and negative solutions for y. So a really good place to pause the video. I promise there are a few simple solutions to this equation. Just to give you a little bit of a hint, here's a picture of this curve. I'm going to graph that curve. Uh, I didn't bother to curve to graph the whole thing, um, but here's a interesting part of it. And I claim you can uh, use this to read off three integer pair solutions. Notice these grids are 2, 4, 6, so for example, 1, 3, 5. We're looking really at, at just where they intersect the grid lines, but I couldn't get it to produce all the grid lines with this graphing program. Um, and so some of them might be halfway in between the grids. So take a look at that. Pause the video, please. Well, here are three of those solutions. Let me just get it together with the picture. OK. Uh, it won't go together with the picture. Let me see if I can get it on the same page. There we go. Okay. So 4, comma, minus 2 right here, 5, comma, 1, and 32, comma, 10. Okay. If you look at the equation, let me bring the equation in as well. Okay. Let's see if I can get it all on the same, same screen. Yep. So uh, 16 equals 24 minus 8. That's from this. 25 is 1 plus 24, and 10, 24, 32 squared is 1,000 plus 24. Okay. Are there any other solutions? Well, that's much harder. I wouldn't expect you to be able to guess that. Um, if you want to s start up the, the computer and uh, do a brute force search, you could try it. Well, here it is. There's one other solution, according to Barry Mazur, who should know about these things. And it is, there we go, 
the pair x equals 736844 and y equals 8158. That would be a way, 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 way out on the, the right and up on this graph. Okay, That would not be uh, fun to look for by hand. Okay, And supposedly that's all the solutions of this, this equation. Okay, So notice what we've done here. We've looked for, we've picked the, fixed the powers to be 2 and 3 and then fix k to be 24 and look for all pairs of solutions x and y. So squares and cubes that differ by exactly 24, or where the square is 24 bigger than the cube specifically. Four solutions exactly, and that is it. Okay. And I believe, believe me, I'm not going to tell you how to prove that because I don't know how. Okay. But that's an example, and then we're going to go on to what's special about 8 and 9 and where that leads.